want to introduce something that we'll be trying to handle um, the month of June. Trying to handle the month of June. We'll try to explain. We'll try to have a conversation around giving. And we pray that by the time we finish, there will be some understanding that God is going to bring into our hearts. Two people are given a maize cob. One of them enjoys that maize. Akaichoma vizuri. Akaila. The other one kept the maize cob. Dried it up and waited for the time to plant it. When the time for planting came, the one who had eaten had nothing to plant. But the one who spared it had something to, to plant. When he planted, the harvest was many maize, maize cobs that he found because he waited. But now the waiting is not easy. Can you put back the song that we sang? I'm sorry I never warned you. Some of these things you find as you walk. I found it as I woke up. And I thought my sermon agrees with what that song says. Can you put it back? Just put it back if you, if you, it is not very far, pull it back. Let's look at that, some of those scriptures. The songwriter of this song saying, I'm going to sow in the morning, but what I'm going to sow in the morning will be seeds of kindness. kindness. And I will do it at the noontime. I will do it in the evening because I'll be waiting for the harvest. And the time of reaping, when it comes, I shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. The chorus, of course, bringing in the sheaves. But the second stanza says this. I'm sowing the seeds that I'm sowing, but there is some sunshine. There is some emptiness. I'm going to do it in the shadows. I'm not so sure whether the sun will penetrate the shadow so that I can have something. And you know, I'm also fearing whether there will be some clouds or, or there will be chill breeze that will burn them. Yani ile baridi ya subui amba uchoma watu wa nyandaro tunajua vile waruzetu zinachomago na iyo iyo ime iyo. And by and by the harvest and the labor comes to an end and everything I've done, I've left to the Lord, there shall be, he repeats again, there shall be rejoicing when I'll be bringing the sheaves. The last stanza, stanza three saying, going forth with weeping, showing for the master, though the law sustained as the hot, the hot sun has hit me and often grieves me because giving is not easy. When our weeping is over, he will bid us welcome and we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Over the years, I have known why I fail to plant. It's because there is an emergency. I have need now. Because I have need now, I want to sort my problem now, not knowing that what I have now, God has given me to plant it, so that my tomorrow becomes better. But because of what I have, the needs I have now, it constrains me that I'm not able to do what the Bible commands me to do. He, although I know that if I plant, I will harvest. Though I know that this, the system of God works that way. If I'm going to prosper, there is something that I'm going to plant on the ground and it is going to die, then it is going to harvest. Although I know that, although I sing about it, because of my needs for today, many times I fail to give. Do you know every time you get your salary, one thing, there are so many things, I don't know whether it is me only, but when the pay strip hits my bank account and I see it, I have more needs than the pay slip. And temptations are there because I have a need now. But I have told myself, uh, what I'm going to do is to forget my needs first so that I can obey the Lord. And every time I have done it, and by the way, it's good sometimes to to own it up. 
Salimia jirani yako. Bishop is owning up. Every time I have started the other way around, meeting my needs, there is so month, month left at the end of my money. I don't know about you. But every time I go the other way around, ata tarehe, the Latina moja, bado niko na change. Kama sasa niko na change. Yeah. Yani inakuja, na bado kuna baki ka change kidogo, una cruise over nako. But the secret is, I have learned to do what God has commanded me. So some of these arguments come. For example, you argue and say, if I get a better job, I will give. If I get promoted, I'm going to give. Some of, some of even think wildly or crazy. They think if my father dies, I will have something to give. If you think that well, your father is not dying soon, actually, your father is going to live until you wonder, Kwani, yeah, well, utazeka, utakuwa eite, na bado baba yako atakuwa mia, na anaendere ya kukatu. So don't think about that. Learn to give to the Lord now and give to the Lord what you have. Some of us say, if I get out of debt, then I will start giving. If I get out of debt, I will start giving. So actually, what most people need is not more money, but they need motivation. And that's what I've been praying for, that God needs to help you know what you need is not more money, but it is the motivation to give. Salimia jiraniyako, motivation to give. We give not because we have more, but we give because there is a motivation within me of giving. Motivation of giving. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have a motivation for giving. And that's what I've been thinking. That when I come to share with you, that is the direction I'm going to follow. To see whether I can motivate us so that we can give. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1 to 4 is a strategic stewardship scripture. And I want to give it a little background so that you can understand. There was severe famine. There was severe famine. It had hit Judea. And I think it would have filled on those days the news of the time. Like when there, was, there is uh, flood waters here, the government says the food have all been destroyed, and they look forward and they say there is going to be famine. There is going to be famine. So that could have been the news. It would have been news then. But what was happening at that time had been prophesied in the book of Acts. Acts 11 verse 27 to 30. Maybe we can look at that. Acts 11 27 to 30. And in, the, in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Verse 28. Then one of them named Akbas stood up and showed by the spirit there that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and, and Saul. In other words, we are saying, this was a prophecy that was prophesied. And the historians, if you did history, you discover that at that time there came famine between AD 45 and AD 46. And forget about it. Don't write those things. I will not help you. But I'm just giving you a background. The only thing I want you to know is that what was happening had already been prophesied. It was not something that was new. It was already prophesied. And by the time when Paul is writing to the Corinthians, it's AD 56. In other words, 10 years have happened. In other words, famine had been happening. I don't know whether, you know, when you read, when you read with me, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1 to 4, you did not feel something uh, like you almost want to ask God, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, of all places, Jerusalem, where the Ark of the Covenant was, 
where the temple was, Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem had more problems than Corinth in Turkey. There were more problems in Jerusalem. And every people, all people around, and Paul is reminding the Gentiles it is time to pay back so that they can help their brethren in Jerusalem or Judea for that matter who are going through some really a famine. And maybe you can get that from Romans 15 verse 25 and 26. It's a little background. In those verses, it indicates that it was looked upon as repaying for a spiritual debt the Gentiles churches or to Jerusalem churches as the first of all the churches because the first church was in Jerusalem. So in 1 Corinthians 16, there is an exhortation, a command, a call to get believers involved in giving. Because giving is a Christian responsibility. Giving is a Christian privilege like prayer and worship and fellowship. Those who are serious about their work with the Lord know generous giving is the truth straight from God's word. We know that. Stinginess is not from God. So as we look at 1 Corinthians, maybe we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. We start there, see how that verse helps us to understand the motivation. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collection when I come. Can you put KJ, K, King James? King James. King James. If it is there. King James. Not, not, Q, not new King James. King James. Right. King James. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. Now, if, if you read another translation, it misses that word. I know now you understand the new, King James, uh, new, the new King James did not say what that one says. Because this one says, as God has prospered him, period. It's like God has already prospered this person. That there will be no gathering when I come. In other words, it is if we start by this passage, we'll get the motivation of giving. Point number one, as God has prospered you. So looking at these scriptures by starting from God has prospered you, then that becomes a motivation. As God has prospered you. You, you. you know, he's not saying as God has prospered Bishop. No, it is as God has prospered you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It begins with the presumption that God has blessed our lives. If you believe that is true, then you should say amen. amen. Or some of you don't believe it. But if you believe that God has already prospered you, you should have an amen. amen. Or look at yourself. Amen. Did you walk into church today? Amen. Prospered you. Amen. Did you take some tea this morning? Prospered you. Did you sleep in a bed today? Prospered you. I, I don't know why you want to sleep on a golden bed and there are people with golden bed that have no sleep. In the name of the Lord. You see, and that becomes my testimony that I have already been Blessed. How am I blessed? By the goodness of God, generation, generation, generosity of God towards me. In other words, God has provided for me, not only for my education, education of my children, and on and on and on, and so on and so forth. Therefore, I am blessed. Are you, uh, some of you married? Ah, there are some that have no children. I mean, there are some whose children have gone away. So, 
I'm talking to people that God has already done what? Prospered. And that is an, is an exhortation for giving. So this one calls us for reflection. Count your blessing. Name them one by one. Count your blessing. See what God has done. It will surprise you to see what God has done. Ah. Salimia jirandia kotena. Well, umebarikiwa. Do you know our biggest problem, why we miss it, is because there is another jacket that you saw with someone and you want it. So instead of thanking God for your jacket, you have started complaining for the jacket of your friend. Ati mungu, ui, kama unge, nipaka jacket kama kale. But you know, can I tell you the truth also? There is also somebody who is anything yours. Sasa tuache kuonea kijicho kitu cha mwingine. We ushukuru mungu unakako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I count my blessing, I name them. Yani naanza kuicha. Unajua sisi ambao tuna watoto na unaamuka asubuhi na wako tu, unaanza kushukuru mungu kwa kila mmoja wao na watoto wa watoto wao. Yani inakuwa very, very interesting. I love the time that I start praying for my brothers and sisters and my nephews and my nieces and their children. I say, Iyo ni maombi ya masawa katha. Kwa sababu, kule mke wangu ametoka wako 19. Ah, yes, see. Kwa hivyo naobea, joy this you are there. Mera ashia you are there. You know that kind of a, you know. But where I come from, we are only seven. So six are alive. So I play for all the miongais and all the nyamburas. Man, that is a good prayer. And then, the other day, I missed to pray for the, the other generation. My mother, when she died, she had, she had many generations. Hata zigine azikuwa zimeandikwa kwa ile report. Because I discovered, kuna wegine walikuwa pale, na wamepata watoto. Lakini watoto wakuwe kwa pale. Kwa hivyo, ni watu wengi. As you, you count your blessing. And, do you... Do you know there are some people, when you ask them, do you know your relative? They say, I don't know anybody. My mother died. My father died. I was left with my grandmother. And she died. I don't know anyone. I met one brother who, who told me, yeah, hata kwao. Hajui. Kwa sababi ya likuja na dada yake mdogo, ya likuwa meaka tatu. Na dada yake meaka miwiri. Walifukuzwa. Wakakotwa wakaja mitani lakini alikuja kuniona na gari sasa tukiongea anasema dada yangu alifariki baridi ya Nairobi akiwa sijui miaka 7 8 mimi nika survive mzungu akanichukua akanisaidia nimesoma niko na mali lakini sina watu wetu so there is something that we can thank god for are you hearing what I'm saying? That should be a motivation when I count my blessings. So giving starts when we become knowledgeable that wherever I am, I have prospered in one way or another. It says our giving should immediately begin because God has prospered us. First Timothy 6 and verse 17, the Bible says, or it declares this, it is God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Some people are always going to somebody to be able to be given. But I want to announce to you that your somebody has arrived and your somebody is God. And he says he wants to give you so that you can enjoy, count your blessing and start enjoying naming them one by one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So therefore, giving simply means I'm going to celebrate the goodness and the generosity of God. The Bible tells me 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7, 7 that God loveth a cheerful giver. The word cheerful here simply means hilarious. That as I give, God wants me to be ninafuraha moyoni. But I saw as if he 
wa Kristo ningependa tuokoke na hii kanisa si nimwambia mara nyingi hii kanisa iwe kanisa iwache kuwa dini iwe kanisa salimia jirani yako iwe kanisa kanisa ni pale kile unamtolea Mungu kwa sababu moyo wako uko sawa usiangalie jirani yako na usimfikirie jirani yako amen kama ni shilingi tano umeishika unamsifu Bwana unashukuru Mungu Biblia inapeana hadithi ya huyu mama aliyekuwa mzee na alikuja na peni tupeni twili tundururu twili tuhela twili But I think what amazed Jesus is that this woman gave all but also she was so happy she gave with all the joy that she had the joy of the Lord But Jesus looked at others who gave they gave a lot but I think unatoa na unaumwa taithia mia moja na nikipenda nikienda pale matu ninaweza pata proti ah mungu sasa unatoa na kunungunika no wonder mbegu yako mm, salimia jirani yako mwambie kama unaumwa usitolee mungu you, you, you know don't give don't because that seed itaoza na itamea Bishop, what are you telling us? I'm saying, hebu salimia jirani yako tena mwambie. Usitoe kama unanuna. But be kuwa mtu ambaye anachangamka. Yaani umetoka pale na mnaperekana na na Bishop labda Bishop amebeba 1200 kwa sababu aliuza kaplot. Eh? Taithi ni 200. Yaani Bishop kibahasha chake ni kikubwa. La ako bele yako. Asikutishe asikutishe We kuja na zako tano kwa sababu ni kale ka you know ka something kale ka something ulifanya ka something ukapigwa jeki na mtu ka something si ndio sasa ni tano tu kwa sababu zilikuwa 50 finje alafu taithi yako yani unakuja mpaka bishop ashangae vile unamsifu Mungu se huyo ndiye Mungu lakini wengine tunakuja ni kama tumenyeshewa sasa watu watasema nini Did you know what I discovered is that nobody is concerned with me. Actually, tutatoka hapa na hakuna mtu atakuuliza tukitoka hapa. Ni wachache sana watakuuliza, eh, kumbe leo ulikuwa umevaa red. Sure, seriously. Tutatoka hapa na wengi wenu hata anayekusalimia hata kuwa ana notice uko na nini. Ah. Unaweza vaa kiatu imepasuka ime, ime ama inacheka. Na hakuna mtu ataiona. Na wewe unajaribu kuificha watu wazione. Na hakuna mtu anaiona. At oh, at unaanza kutoa ushuhuda. Najua Mungu, Mungu ninampenda lakini unaona afikia watu vile kiko. Na hakuna mtu alikuwa ameona. Sasa ndio naona, oh. Si usoneshe pale na ni shilingi tano. So the motivation of my giving actually is because God has prospered me prospered me so we have we have started with the, the the prosperity let's go back to that verse again the verse number two again let's see let's let's look at it again now concerning the collection upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store as god has prospered him that there will be no gatherings when i come and as i thought about it it is just the other day tell your neighbor this just the other day people started being employed for a whole month it is just the other day ah wale wazazi wao walifanya kazi katika shamba za wazungu salimia jirani yako mkumbushe walikuwa wakilipo kila friday yeah kila friday walipewa pesa hapana wengi walipewa chakula umefanya kazi ni mikebe tatu ya mahindi kamkebe kamoja kambosho unachanganywa pale na unaenda ukiimba sikuimbia si, si ile wimbo shoshu alikuwa akinifundisha zamani ona mothogoe wira no dai tole galige wira no Niliwaimbia ni kusahau mmesahau. Kwa hivyo walikuwa akilipwa na tumbo. Sasa Paulo anawaambia akina shosho, 
weka maindi yako 10% kila wiki ikisubiri nikija hakuna kutoa tena kwa hivyo it, it was weekly so when we tell you even today because we will tell some of you to bring your tithe is because some of you you have tithe every week so that's why tithe is given every week some can give every day because business people yetu inakujaga wakati wa wote hata saa hii ninaweza toka pale nitoke tu pale nipigiwe simu na mtu anambia anataka plot kangu nikiwa pale sasa si tithe kwani kuna nini nyingine kwa hivyo tithe sio kwa sababu ukiweka mpaka mwisho wa mwezi utakula tulifundishwa pale tulikuwa kwa ukiweka uweke mahali ambapo kuna kufuri kutoa inakuwa ngumu na ni zako hiyo saving usiweke mahali ambapo unaweza kula so lay aside so we want they want to lay aside a percentage and this is what everyone can you and i can give a certain percentage there is not a person to rich or a person so poor who cannot at least give a tithe there isn't one rich one poor the difference is percentage so i'm going to give my percentage you're going to give your percentage as the lord prospers you somebody observed people giving and he looked at people he watched many families because he was in a big gathering of people and it was for a few years he watched and as he cancelled them on their giving he says they, he saw greater prosperity and happiness among the families who tithed than the families who didn't an observation an observation may the lord help us we lay aside a proportionate of our amount as god has prospered you not ex- you know but you know some of us also suffer from i have to tithe exact and i have warned people usijaribu hiyo salimia jirani yako tena mwambie jirani usijaribu hiyo and i will tell you why because if you're going to give the whole tithe the whole inamaanisha ile chai ulirunuliwa na mtu na ungejirunulia hiyo ni pesa toa zaka yako hapo oh bishop what are you saying umelipwa na mtu kwa basi mliingia kwa matatu akakuona pale nyuma akasema hata za ule usiseme nimepata bahati leo si kutumia fair so so giving you should actually avoid giving 10% give more some of us give 15 others give 20 give more why because kuna mama alikuletea unga na maziwa mama bwana asifiwe sana na ungenunua unga na ungenunua maziwa kwa hivyo let's learn to give more than a percentage let's not die there with the percentage let's give more as the lord gives us the grace the blessing of god upon a person the love and obedience of the blessed believer who gives everyone who gives there is a blessing let every one of you that's point number 3 let every one of you this is a call of responsibility this message by apostle paul was originally addressed to the church of, at corinth and this is to christians like ourselves who are already joined to the body of christ to all of us this scripture says let every one of you no member is excluded this is for the young for the old for the rich for the poor all have a responsibility to give to the lord through their church our lord looked at a widow as i had said earlier and commended her for the two mites that she gave but he also received some wealth a lot of it from barnabas 
Therefore, whether Barnabas in the house or the poor widow in the house, our giving should reflect the resources that God has given us. Someone might ask, am I to give if I don't feel like? Oh, that was a powerful question, isn't it? Do I give if I don't feel like? If you ask me, I'll tell you don't. But that is Bishop Kimani. But as far as God is concerned, even when you don't feel like, you should give. Because, wale mumeowa, eh? Ukiamuka asubui moja, my brother. Na ufeel, ujaowa. Na nilikuwa kwa ukiowa. Uletu, itabadilisha. Wacha. Ndajua kuna watu, mambo ya mungu tu, is where you want to, to put feelings. And today I felt like I cannot give. If you ask me, don't give. Here is according to me. But as far as God is concerned, that it is a command. Ah, salimia jirani yako mwambia haya. Ikiingia ya mungu ni amri. Lakini kwa bishop, kwa thawasi taki unune nune 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 yapa nione sura yako mrefu. But God is commanding us. It's a command. You know what I'm talking about. Because you don't always have that warm fuzzy feeling about even your spouse, you know. There are some even who go to a point of even wondering whether the children you have are yours. So who are you doubting? Your wife. She ain't doing you don't feel like DNA mchezo yako DNA hata hata wengine wanakufanana hata you don't need DNA tukipita tukulete kwa sababu sura macho masikio yote kichwa round hiyo yote tunakuletea mtoto wako kamata mtoto wako so it is not feeling, you don't, you don't wake up and you don't feel like you are, you are a daddy. No. So, there are three levels of giving which are critical and it's actually one. I have to give because it is a command. I need to give because it is my obligation. I need to give. I want to give because I love it. Let me say it again. I have to give because it is law. I need to give because it is my obligation. I love to give because I'm fulfilling a purpose in the Lord. So meaningful giving comes from the heart, not just the checkbook or pocketbook or money in the pocket. It is an obligation to go off and support the work of God. It is my love for God that causes me to give. Finally, Upon the first day of the week. Now this calls for regularity. What is behind this phrase is upon the first day of the week. Well, every Lord's day you, we are together, it is that week that we ought to give that which God has given us. The Lord's house, the place we have come to hear God's word is the place we bring our tithes and our offerings so that God can be honored. I want to Finish by reading two scriptures. One, it is in Deuteronomy 16 and verse 16. I told you, I'm just laying some foundation and giving you an exhortation to give or a motivation to give. Deuteronomy 16, verse 16 says, Three times a year, or your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses. At the feast of a living bread, at the feast of the weeks, and the feast of the tabernacles. And thou shalt appear before the Lord Thou shalt not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Now that was in the Old Testament and it is in the temple. They would appear before the Lord. They would appear before the Lord. But we should not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Another scripture, 1 Chronicles 16 and 29. 1 Chronicles 16 and 29. 1 Chronicles 16 and 29. That is 26 and 29. 
16 and 29. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we come to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Somebody has quoted this as a slogan. And um, I almost thought we can borrow it. You know when you get a slogan somewhere, you think you should borrow it. It says this. Wake up. Pray up. Sing up. Preach up. Pay up. Never give up. Never let up. Be up or shut up until the cause of crisis build up. Now that, that's powerful. Salimia jirani, akomwambia jirani, never give up. But we need to wake up, we need to pray up, we need to sing up, preacher, you need to preach up, and we need to pay up our tithe and our offering, and never give up, never let up, Never back up or shut up until the cause of Christ is built up. Now that is the kind of commitment that we can have. Let's go back to the song that we sang when we started and I think I am through. Let's put back that song again and I want to ask the choir to come and help me and the rest of us. And as we sing, I want you to mean those words. Know that sometimes giving is painful. Sometimes you are giving when you are in need, great need, but you have to do it like Isaac because you know you're going to harvest even in that farming, farming time. That it doesn't matter the situation. Be faithful. Let's try our God this year. Amen? Let's all stand and sing that song as we wind our service today. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing may the clouds go. Winter's chilling breeze By and by the harvest And the labor ended We shall come rejoicing Bringing in the sheaves Bringing in the sheaves Bringing in the sheaves We shall come rejoicing Bringing in the sheaves Bringing in the sheaves We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, going forth with weeping, sowing for the master, though the Lord sustained us, spirit of and grieves, when our weeping's over, he will be as welcome, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Our Heavenly Father, if there is any in this church this morning, who is struggling 
in the area of giving or in the area of tithing. We want to pray that this exhortation to them will be received in their spirit and their heart and they will not struggle anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, dear Father, that you're going to release us to be cheerful, hilarious givers, to be men and women that are happy as we come every Sunday carrying an offering in the house of God. I want to pray, dear Father, that you, we will be prospered because your word says so. That you're going to open doors for those that are seeking doors to be open. Job opportunities and promotions and business thriving. This will happen. Contracts being signed in the name of Jesus. So that in the house of God, like Malachi says, there will be bread in the storehouse of God. Therefore, Father, from this altar, I speak a release of your favor upon your people. Lord God, may they walk in that freedom. May they walk in that release. May whatever they plant, dear Father, give them a hundredfold to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. We know you have done it, for we ask, ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. You could be in this house and maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And maybe you are saying, Bishop, when will you call me to give my heart and my life to Jesus? I want to give you that opportunity. If you are here, you have never given your life to Jesus and you want to give it to him as a sacrifice to him. You want him to receive you as a living sacrifice. If you are here, you are not born again. Would you lift up your hand? I will see it. And I want to pray for you right now in the name of the Lord. You are here. You are not born again. And you would like to give your life to Jesus. I want to pray for you right now in the name of the Lord. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, I release your people. May your grace go before them. And dear Father, may this week be a week of hilarious giving or joyful giving. For this is my prayer. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Let's sit down with a smile.